This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Off the play fake, James. And that is incomplete here. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Back to throw again. And his throw here is incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. Again, he'll drop to throw. That's to his running back, complete. And he is going to get the first down as he covers up after a pretty good shot there. Boy, that's some kind of effort. When he caught it, I doubted if he could get there. Knew it was going to be close, but credit him, really good effort. How about the rack on that play, the run after catch? But most of the time, we think of it as just being an open field and picking up yardage. Sometimes you have to be real physical in order to gain the yardage you need for a first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Off play action, James. Forced out to his left. He finds Smith out of the backfield and inside the 20 before he's brought down. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the football around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. That's got to cause a lot of consternation on the defensive side. You've got to cover him, too. That makes things really difficult. On first down, Bonner. Denzel Ward, the number four pick in the 2018 draft, making the tackle from his corner spot. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Off the play fake, James. And it's caught. And he's brought down. They give them credit for a good read right there because they read the man coverage on the right side and sent the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. He was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice game. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. Looking to throw. James. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. A great effort there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Dolphins have got it back to a one-score game. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Four, 
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Fielded right around the eight. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Browns drive about to get started. Now they entered play on a two-game win streak, and then they've got the open date on their schedule next week. So this is a group that's really looking to hit the break on a high note. And this will obviously be a tough game for them, but go ahead and play this out with me, partner. If they win here and make it three in a row, they get to heal up after that. You've got to think that's an ideal setup and a worthy goal to play for in this one. just getting the playoff. And that is taken in by Njoku. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 48 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 44-yard line. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14-7. to seven. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll send you up to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there, and he'll have stats and scores from a busy Sunday in the NFL. Here's a throw dropped off to his fullback. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. Hold on a second. Was that the fullback? That was the fullback. Who says that the slot receivers are the only guys who can catch the football and get big yardage after the catch? Really nice job there. Showing good hands and an ability to get upfield. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Give. This is Chubb. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb on his way to a monster game. Three first half touchdowns. And the Browns add six to their lead. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And it's now 21 to 7. Kick this one away, and off it goes. And here comes a return from a few steps into the end zone.
The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Now James throwing on first down. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Back to throw. James looking deep downfield. He's got a man complete. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. Looking to throw. James. A good rally to the football. Keeps him to only a yard and it's second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there, tried to force it in. That one, he's fortunate, just fell incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Back to throw, James. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Jason Sanders now for the Miami field goal. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with the lead. As we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Both teams likely making their final adjustments before the second half. So time for us to go back downstate to Miami and rejoin Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. Takes it at the seven. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And the ledger for them so far looks pretty good, doesn't it? It certainly does. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. <laughs> Not sure it could be much better than that. They've got to feel very good about the groove that they're in at this stage of the game. 88 yards rushing for him here as he starts to draw closer to a 1,000-yard campaign. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They go play action. Mayfield. His throw incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. But if you drop the football, that position could get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot or running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. They go with Chubb on second down. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. This is the tight end to Joku. 
And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now Chubb running right. Runs over him. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see if... the call Let's go. Let's do so following the hold they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20 play fake Mayfield that's into a crowd and intercepted picked off at the 46 and his crew will take over at their own 45-yard line. Well, pretty much everything went their way offensively in the first half, but now an interception on the opening drive of the third quarter. As we know, the key to everything here, don't get careless with the football. The problem is you've got to stay aggressive as well. So where's the line between being aggressive and attacking and being overly aggressive? I think they just crossed it on that one. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And they just got a little help from their defense forcing the turnover. Now can they make that payoff in points? They need to, partner. They're down on the scoreboard. Need to take advantage of those opportunities. And this is a good one right in front of them. They're throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Hey, check Mike 33. Check Mike 33. Here we go, D. Hey, it's just me and you. It's just me and you. Mike, check 33. 33. I'm coming. I'm coming. And second and 10, he'll look to throw again. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Off play action, James. He's going to look deep down the field. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he finally goes down, but not before reaching the 21. It's a big play there for Miami. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Looking to throw. James throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man when in coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties, and he's able to knock that one away. 
They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Back to throw. James. Got a man. It's Waddle complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. A very important third down conversion right there because when you're trailing and find yourself this deep in enemy territory, the kicker's not even part of your thought process. You got to make it pay off with six. Nice connection right there to set up first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. From the gun, James. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. And that's a good job there by the corner. And we do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. They'll look to throw on third and goal. Being chased out left. For the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they've brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. James throwing on fourth down. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And the Browns will take over here at their own 12-yard line. Yet another interception, and I just had to double-check my math. But it is now eight between last week and this week. Well, I just used the calculator. I didn't worry about <laughs> double-checking it. But the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot... They're trying to figure out what they can do to change it, and sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it. And that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. 98 yards rushing for him so far as his terrific season continues here. Second down, here's Chubb again. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? On third down, it's Nick Chubb. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. And off comes to Chubb. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. A run for Nick Chubb. Broke a tackle, but not much room there ultimately. Just up past the 25 and no further. Now third down is looming. A pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. And they call it a loss of a yard there. And that's going to make it fourth down. Back now in Miami. As it looks like we are just about set and ready to begin with the fourth. Here's Jamie Gillen now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. 
A 41-yard punt there with no return. And it'll be Dolphin football. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off right around the 43. And they finally put it into this return, but not before he's all the way down to the 37. And that's now a half dozen interceptions for him over the last two games. Because CD, remember, he threw three in the last ball game, and now three more here. And the way that you present it, partner, I'm not sure what sounds worse, right? Half a dozen over the last two games, or three the last game, three this game. Either way, it's way too many. And that's something they'll have to work on, hoping to get through the rest of this game without having to address it again. Brings up second and now it's second and nine. They run it again with Chubb. Bulldozes past him. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb. A 21-yard touchdown run. And the Browns are closing in on a third straight win as they widen the gap further here in the fourth quarter. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be returned from deep in the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And you see a lot of frustrated faces as they are inching closer to a fourth straight look. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Greedy Williams picks it off. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. That interception may be the exclamation mark on what really all around has been a good performance. A fantastic performance. They will enjoy film session. Their grade should be very good on this one. And I think the next time the offense gets the ball, I just think about running it and getting the clock done and getting the heck out of here. And by the way, semantics here, but before the grammar police come after me, I think it's exclamation point, not mark, right? You're asking me? Seriously? Yeah, you're smarter than me. Everybody I, knows that. Listen, I go with what you say, my man. <laughs> the last run got three. Now here's second and seven. And again, it's Chubb. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Call it a gain of three, and it'll bring up fourth down. They'll run for it. Chubb. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. 
call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old-school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. Was that five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive, and like you said, and yeah, this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Donovan Peoples-Jones, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs, and I think they're going to at least take a look at this. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. The extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 28. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped it to 23. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Malik McDowell able to record his fifth sack of the season. That right now, that's a defeated team out there. I think you can see it totally in their body language. Hands on hips, heads low. Uh, it's just been a struggle from the start. Yeah, this team has been thoroughly beaten right from the word go. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. And a short gate across the 15 to the 17-yard line. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. They'll keep it on the ground. Bonner. And he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. A good pick up there, seven yards, but it brings up fourth down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. Pilardi now on to punt as he sends this one away. A 40-yard punt, give him three on the return. And the Browns will take over first and ten. The Browns drive about to get started. And right about now, heck, they might be wishing they did not have a bye week coming up next week. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. Pass the 20. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. And Nick Chubb, about as dynamic a runner as the NFL has to offer. He put his talents on full display there. That was some kind of run. And how about the situation that we're in right now? Because this is the fourth quarter. So you know there's some tired legs out there on defense and probably some tired minds as well trying to chase guys around for four quarters. But this is where conditioning, athleticism, that separates the good backs from the great backs, and that was an A-plus effort right there. And he covered a lot of ground on that one, as evidenced by the final total there on next-gen stats. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory, not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, 
They need to do that and do it really well. Otherwise, there could be repercussions. We'll see how they handle the waning moments of this one. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. I think this offense, specifically this running game, they're going to have to find a way to turn the page because they haven't found a way to run it effectively thus far, and it's cost them. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. That looks like a pickup of six. That leaves him with seven yards to go on third down. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. On third down, Bonner. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. A 40-yard punt, one yard on the return. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. The Browns drive about to get started. And they're looking at a third straight win here if they can hold on. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And he works free. And they're able to get this one across the 35. All day, baby, all day. The tackle made at the 36-yard line. A gain of 16 yards. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on all. 